Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> hey, today is Tuesday, June 11th. My name is Bruce Turner. I'm in Lynchburg, Virginia. My name is Chris Jenkins, and I am in Orlando, Florida. My name is Dennis DeVoe, and I am in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My George name is Dennis field. DeVoe, and I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. No, I'm George Thatcher. My name is Jeff Zayas, and I'm in, well, I'm still San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. I'm Duke Carrico. Hey, on this edition of Tech and Coffee's Android Journal, Google's Purchased Ways, Samsung wins another patent war battle, Apple drops Google for Bing when it comes to Siri search, and iOS 7, it's the new Jelly Bean. Welcome, gang. How we doing? Doing good. Right. A little pause in the action there, but doing good. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Hey, uh, hey, guys! I'm fudging tired. That's all I got to say. Fudging tired. George, George is in the process of moving. Hey, so uh, am I. And 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 listen, man. This time next Friday, or this time this Friday, I'm going to be playing ski ball with Bruce and George, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ski ball. Yeah. And I will lose like the biosh I am. <laughs> oh, of course you'll lose, George, because you're George. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey guys, a lot went on this week in uh, in the world of Android, and uh, what went on wasn't necessarily part of Google. So let's uh, let's cover some tracks, man, and then we'll talk about some apps. First of all, Google has purchased Waze for one point three billion. Waze is a uh, it's a mapping outfit. They're based out of uh, Israel, and uh, Google, I guess, is uh, they like ways so good they're going to keep the the team intact, and uh, has promised not to necessarily do anything with them until 2016. They're probably going to incorporate maybe some stuff into Google Maps along the way, and Bruce. I know you're a pretty big fan of Waze. I've heard you tout them several times, and I was on uh, our Android Week with you last night. Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, is this a good move for Google? It's a great move for Google, and uh, I confess I am a Wazer, as they are known, people who use it. There's about 50 million dedicated Wazers, and uh, Waze is just a really great navigation app. But the biggest thing about it, and the reason I think Google bought it, and there are two reasons. One is the social media aspect of Waze. I mean, with Waze, you can report all kinds of things, whether it's an accident or a policeman shooting radar or a vehicle on the side of the road. With one touch, you can find out where the closest and cheapest gas stations are. Um, it's just a really great uh, app for navigation. It's, it's um, right, you know, right now it has a connection with Facebook. So you can create a Facebook event. You can log into Waze. You'll see that Facebook event. You can type on it and uh, click on it, rather. You can see where everybody that's going to that event is and what their approximate ETAs are. So I'm really looking forward to Google uh, providing this uh, more of a social media function to it and maybe connect it with Google Plus events. That'd be really great. If so, we could use it Friday on the way to the ski ball tournament. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, anybody else got any opinions on this? Good move, bad move, $1.3 is a lot of money. I'll tell you what, uh, this would have been nice on my uh, work uh, commute yesterday. Considering somebody got shot down here on I-4 by a policeman, yeah, I-4 was closed for three hours. Yeah, Waze does a great job because it's community supported. So, uh, Wazers would report traffic slowdowns or roads shut down, and Waze would immediately reroute you uh, based on that real-time information that's communicated by other people that are using Waze. Um, I think the, the other aspect of this thing is uh, I think Google was really trying to keep Waze away from Facebook. The reason Facebook couldn't get Waze is because A, they, they were, they were going to force all the Waze employees to come from Israel and go to California, and B, they were only going to give them, they were going to pay for it with stocks and cash, but the Google deal is all cash and the Wazers can remain in Israel and uh, so that's why they finally went with Google. So I like it. Yeah, it's a great move for Google. Excellent move. And you're right; it is a it is a game to keep away. 
Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Apple didn't jump in the fray as well because even though they kind of launched their new apps, it would have been new maps, excuse me, it would have been good for them as well. But they, they dropped out. But uh, Well, you know why, Jeff? Because Apple has lost their ways. They lost their ways. Oh, uh, you know, but I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke. Is there about a drum why, roll somebody could play somewhere? I was gonna make a joke about, uh, you know, them being in Israel, you know, the lost tribe, and they had to develop the, develop it to get out. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. But yeah, uh, good, good job, Google. <clears throat> Bruce, now you, you've used Ways quite a bit, and and I have installed it. I, I really haven't used it. But uh, I understand that you can. There's a. It's it's slightly delayed, but you can actually interact with other Wazers on the road. Right. They uh, when when you log into Waze, it's about it's about a minute and a half before your little icon shows up where you are. You know they're concerned, I think, and rightfully so, for privacy and stalkers. Uh, you, if you see a little Waze icon, and everybody can change their icon and and make it you know whatever they want it to look like on the road. But you don't want to know that that person is, you know, exactly so many, you know, feet or miles away from you. So there's a little delay there. But you can tap on their icon, and and you know, you wouldn't want to do this as a driver, but somebody else in the car, you tap on the icon, it opens up a little dialog. Do you want to I am this person? And you can, you know, chat with them, and meet people, and it, it just makes traveling a lot more fun. Yeah, and be great if you're out like to have a caravan of people kind of going to a you know, specific location saying, hey, mm -hmm. we have to make a pit stop, you know, maybe that's a good thing to do. So. Yeah. Well, you know, with Latitude, you can, and you can do this in ways too, but uh, see, I think we're, we will be able to Friday as we uh, descend on to Charlotte, George can, I'm sure, see where everyone's at, uh, you know, uh, through ways or Latitude, either one. But I, I really think that the social aspect was what Google was uh, was really after with this. And a lot of people can say, well, you know, 40 million users, that's that's not very social. But I think Google sees the opportunity to really grow this. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know how many times I've been on, like, a road trip somewhere, you know, by myself or with somebody else. And uh, it was, like, a big, long road trip. For example, uh, I was living up in Kentucky three years ago, and I went to go see somebody in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, I followed this person, you know, we traded spots between following and, and leading, you know, and we were we were following and leading each other for probably more than half the trip. I think it would have been kind of fun to say, hey, where are you going to, you know? Because, uh, I don't know, there was a, a, uh, a picture a long time ago that said, uh, I get emotionally attached to uh, cars that are uh, on my route for a very long time, you know. That okay. sounds like a problem, actually. <laughs> it is a problem. <laughs> it does. Uh, I mean, everyone's I leaving you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go, please. Don't go. Don't turn left. No. Well, I, I think this will give uh, Google uh, a an opportunity for real time user feedback, which their maps currently don't have. I mean, they can't tell you. You can't look at a Google satellite and you know look toward a picture and tell that there's problems up ahead. And I think that's what this is going to give you. So, yeah, man, good move, Google. Anything else on that before we move on? Yeah, well, I, 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 go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say Bruce had it right. Is also a keep away from other um, you know, Facebook or other companies from grabbing it as well. Yeah. yeah. The, the the other neat thing about Waze is uh, you can interact with it without having to spend a whole lot of time looking at it. I mean, if you're a driver, and, you know, I use the IATI uh, car mount for my Galaxy Note 2, but you can, all you have to do is, you know, I, all I have to do is know where my phone is, and I just I just put my palm on it, and I swipe How from right, can I help? And, and, it, and it talks to me, and then I can say, I can say whatever I want because it's listening. I can say, report an accident, or, and it'll ask me, you know, is it moderate, is it severe? Uh, so, you know, it's 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 a, kind of a hands-free, except for that swiping across the palm, which is very easy to do when you're driving. I mean, it's not any different than honking the horn or, you know, putting on a turn signal. So it's uh, it works really good that way. I thought you were going to say giving someone the finger. I, I wasn't real sure of that. <laughs> oh, yes. I had my experience with that today at 7.30 in the morning. Yes, that was me. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how Google uh, – 
integrates ways into their existing maps because, uh, let's face it, guys, Google has the uh, best maps of any of the mobile OSs. Uh, I know a lot of Nokia people who might be watching right now might want to argue with me on that, but I still think that Google Maps are superior overall. So, uh, yeah, man. Uh, <clears throat> all right, guys. Let's talk a little bit about patent wars. Uh, Samsung's won another one, and they've had, this time they've actually managed to ban Apple products coming into America. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, you know, this isn't the this decision isn't final, and you know, let's face it, lost profits are uh, nothing to Apple uh, as far as what these products are. But uh, it does kind of go to show that uh, uh, maybe maybe Samsung isn't necessarily uh, copying Apple at every turn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they've managed to do some of these, and these are like a iPad 2s, iPhone 4, and I'm sure there's not a lot of those coming in here to, to America. But still yet, it looks like that Apple is a, it's a preliminary ban on uh, some of these older products. Uh, aren't you guys sick of this as I am? Mm -hmm. hey, karma's a bitch, right? So, Can't um, we all just get along? Actually, I saw a uh, HD wallpaper the other day. It was an Android on a skateboard and an Apple on a skateboard and another Android on a skateboard in front of the Apple. And uh, it said that exact same thing. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> Uh, and that one is billions of dollars at stake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, and lawyers. And lawyers, you know, and yes, they're yes. both they're they're on staff. There's not like they're not on staff, right? So you know they gotta they gotta slow the competition. And that's what they it's all about sometimes. It's, all right, I've been slowing look, you I, down for years, Jeff. You have. I mean, look where you are I now. I, I I even got you moving. We're both moving <laughs> simultaneously. What the heck is that? <laughs> Farther away from each other. Pretty we'll much. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, let's uh, let let's move on here. Uh, let's talk about. Uh, uh, you know, I, I hesitate to do this, guys, because you know we are an Android show and we like Android. But this week, you know, Apple had their uh, worldwide developer conference, and uh, they announced uh, hardware. I think we got a new uh, Mac. Uh, Software iOS 7 was uh, unveiled, and uh, I just uh, think that be, being an Android show, it's worth talking about uh, Apple. I, I, would, I hope that instead of suing uh, each other all the time when it comes to these Android manufacturers and Apple, that, uh, that both of these uh, advancing the OS is driving better competition because you and I win in the end. But... <clears throat> Like I say, a Apple was out yesterday. I watched most of the keynote. Did not get to watch all of it. I did get to watch most of the iOS 7 keynote. Uh, but real quick, uh, uh, listen, they uh, Apple's unveiled that uh, Google is going to be dropped as the search engine for C Siri, and it's going to be replaced with Microsoft's Bing search engine. Bing! So, uh, you, you, you know, that kind of makes sense in a strange sort of way based on their presentation. Because I don't know if you, when you saw the, first of all, the, just on, on, just to talk about the presentation that they did, they were, did a great job. Professionally, they did a great job with the, the I.O. thing. But all their um, Safari representations to the other browsers, it didn't have um, IE on it at all for uh, in the um, uh, performance attributes and all those things about Safari, so uh, kind of makes sense that they now they made the announcement of uh, dropping, um, you know, Google and going to Bing. They must have worked out some kind of alliance with Microsoft. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, no, they I didn't. They didn't bash any. They, there wasn't any other in the presentation. Was any um, comparisons with IE on there at all? I don't know. Uh, I think there's an underlying cause for this. Um, you know, uh, Android and iOS have been really, really, really like butting heads over the last couple of years, and um, I think this is Apple's way of saying, 
guess what? We don't need you anymore. First, they got rid of Maps. Now they're getting rid of the actual Google search engine on the on the iPhone. Mm. Yeah, I agree, but I was just yep. making a point about their presentation. Huh? Wow. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I... <laughs> I mean, honest. I mean, you know, the whole thing is about the user, right? I mean, I want to be, I want to have the best search engine possible if I'm looking for something. I want to have the best maps possible if I'm navigating somewhere. So, so you know, for Apple to, uh, you know, to drop Google Maps, to drop Google, uh, you know, search, uh, is it really providing the best experience for the users at the expense of, you know, we did it our way? You know, I just doesn't make sense to me. Well, bear in mind, I don't know if they're necessarily trying to make it the best experience for the users, because look at the whole thing with the Apple Max debacle. Um, that was clearly a case of we're, an, we're not friends with Google right now, uh, so this is what we're going to do, and it looks like this is just going to be an extension of that. Yeah, but they turned, to, oh, sorry. Go ahead. They, they turned to Microsoft before, before when they needed cash. I think Microsoft gave them $400 million bucks for yeah. um, putting the Microsoft Office on the Mac, right? So um, it's a long time ago, but they've turned to them before. And, uh, you know, they have a stronger alliance with Microsoft than they do with Google. It's, you know what I think it is? I think Apple and Microsoft are starting to realize that the only way to, to beat Google is to tag team Google. I don't know because, um, you know, being here recently uh, has their, their Facebook integration, uh, you know, into the search results. And we also see that Facebook has now been integrated into iOS itself. So do you think that uh, they are wanting to continue with the Facebook trend in iOS? I think they're wanting to do exactly what I just said. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah because I, 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 go ahead, George. I, no, I was going to say I, I I agree with you, Duke. I mean, I, I think I think uh, there's always going to be some form of anti-Google alliance between um, Apple and Microsoft, and um, and unfortunately, like Bruce says, it, it's probably cutting down the good experience for the user itself, uh, themselves. So basically. I don't know. I mean, I, I have no clue why they're doing it. It's more just more. It seems more like we don't like you, Google. We're just gonna do whatever we can to. It's like digital risk. I'm gonna put some of my troops on Kamchatka. I mean, for goodness' sakes. <laughs> Good analogy. That sounded Klingon-ish there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, are we speaking Klingon now? What is it? Kamchatka. Uh, yeah. oh, oh gosh. But you got. But you know, does Google have anything to worry about? No. Because guess what? It's not just Google, the search engine. It's Google services. It's everything that's tied into Google and all the services that they have. So I, I don't think they have anything to worry about. I just think that it's, you know, it's something that people might, and then the end users might say, hey, we want Google back. That's what they said whenever Maps left. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and if, if Apple's dancing with Microsoft, you know, poor, poor Yahoo's sitting over there in a chair waiting for a suitor to come and ask him to the dance. They ain't got nobody to dance with. Tumblr? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, but they bought Tumblr for less money than uh, Waze, right? That's right. Yeah, so that was a good buy compared to that. Yeah, and, and who knows? You might see Yahoo and Facebook together before it's over with. Ugh. See. See that was that was Tennessee, wasn't it? Yahoo. Yahoo. Hot lines, you Here we go, guys. Hey, uh, can we talk about the uh, a little bit about the uh, Apple's presentation yesterday? Yeah, we're getting ready to talk about right now here. Can we let's just talk can about we just... that? I, let's talk about that iOS seven, our guys. Let's talk about that. <laughs> well, I... what do I feel like I'm in the Andy Griffith show right now? I, I, I listen. I, I you, you, you ever eat jelly beans before? I think that iOS seven tastes a lot like jelly bean. What do you think? Even I, the colors. Yeah, look well, like jelly bean. Um, I, I think the best way to put it, if I can, um, is something I put on my Google Plus stream yesterday. Here we go. Um, basically, Apple steals Google's thunder and announces key lime pie before Google. <laughs> Very good. Very good. And I've seen a lot of references. But I will agree. You know, just watching the uh, watching the 
the keynote, and I like I said, I did get to see the iOS seven most of it. And hey, guys, it, it just hit me that I mean, and I, I've got an iPad laying right here with in arm's reach of me. The App Store is just now going to get automatic updates to apps. No more manual updates if you choose that. I mean, how long have we had that on the Android yeah. platform to where you could check a box and any time an app got updated, it would automatically update without you touching it? That's okay? 2.3 right there. Yeah, yeah I mean... Uh, yeah. But, you know, gosh, I guess I'm the only one, maybe I am the only one in the panel right now that, that thinks they did a great job. Well, they did I, a great listen, job. They I, brought. I, they, I, I think they did a great job, but I mean things that uh, because I've watched them since the original iPhone, okay, and I heard that R word three or four times during that presentation, and I didn't even watch the whole presentation. That R word being revolutionary. Well, bull crap. It wasn't revolutionary. Okay? No. Because it no. was stuff that's already offered in Android. Yes, yes it, was, it was presented pretty, Jeff. It was, it was. presented pretty it, and professionally, but it wasn't nothing no. special. The thing that was special was the MacBook Pro. That was special. That was... You uh, mean the, uh, the ICANN? Yeah, I, I, like I think... No, it looks, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. D2 in a glass? It looks great. It's going to be... what I heard was R2-D2 is uh, a little uh, filter. Uh, Hold it. Let me finish here because I'm, I have some things. I, I'm the I'm, I'm going to be the devil's advocate. You know, this was not a ma You know, even though they it was a different operating system, it was supposed to be a major tick. It wasn't a major tick up. It was really a refined version of what they had, and they brought it up to Google standards basically. And, and um, uh, yeah, but they did it. In I a, do agree. Uh, they did it in a. They did things that were. You know, Google has done stuff that's copied. You know, iPad and you know and the whole thing. So, but they're just all coming up at the same level. They're almost to, to the same level. You know, um, it's, it's good. It's good for iOS users. It's good for Apple. I'm taking. I'm not going to buy anything, right? But I well, tell you that that guy, that um, Craig Federici, whatever it was, the guy in the blue shirt. Oh, he, he was. Did, he he did a stellar job, man. Yeah, he, he was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Al Gore like, looked excited, didn't he? Sitting oh, yeah. there next to Johnny what Ives. What we're doing there? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. This is what I put on my Google Plus stream whenever I saw iOS 7. Um, I was like, oh, hey, look, guys. There's a uh, a new icon set out for uh, iOS 6. No, they had some Google Now-ish kind of things going on where you could send a map from your desktop to your phone. It would be right there. you know, And you, all you have to do is click it, click it and you navigate to that location. They had some I, nice things. They had some nice things that were well, nice. and, and and I'm not arguing that, Jeff. I, and and but, yes, but, you but are. just let you me agree. just let me say this, Jeff. <laughs> uh, w would you agree or disagree that what Apple unveiled yesterday was uh, a great attempt of catching what Google users currently have in the in the Jelly Bean platform? Would you agree or disagree? I think it leveled the. I, I I would say it in a different. I would agree it leveled the playing field a little bit. Yeah. Okay. It leveled I, the and playing field. I agree field. with that. I the, honestly, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I think that they really did a good job of closing a lot of the gaps that Android has uh, basically created in the last two three iterations of Android. You know. Uh, yeah. Most definitely. And, and, and I, I think they they did a good the a really good job of uh, of addressing a lot of those things. And you know it 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 went over well, and I think it's going to be well received. You know, and I think I'm that not, MacBook Pro looks. I hate to be. I think it looks great. I'm I considering think, just uh, disposing of all of my Linux and Android stuff and going right to Apple. Not. <laughs> No, let me say that. No, but but well, but I watched I watched a lot of it. I didn't watch all of it. I watched a lot of it. I, I thought it was a good presentation. I thought it it brought uh, to iOS and and it, it brought stuff that should be there. I mean, I, I'm not. I haven't. I can't say I've extensively used iOS, but I have touched it and I have worked in it. Um, but. I, I, the presentation yesterday, me being an Android and Linux user, is not going to push me into the edge of going to Apple. 
Yeah, but the, it was know, a they, good presentation. But it, it was a good presentation, and they had they 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 uh, unveiled the Haswell processor in their their uh, laptops. You know, double the double the um, battery, battery life. Yeah, you know, the battery life absolutely yeah, twelve hours least, battery the, life on a laptop. You know, I, I, but, the, but basically on an ultrabook like laptop to be specific. But well, well you know, I, I guess I shouldn't have used the term no, ultra. That's, there, yeah, but but the, the Haswell but, processor that's that's not that's not anything. That battery life's coming to anyone that's using that that has well processed. Yeah, but they they think they showed some kind of you know CPU um, when everything is anything is in the forefront of your view. It would anything that's processing below would you know go in the background and actually lower the CPU clock um, cycles and things like that. They did some nice trick things with the uh, that, Bruce, you know, probably other operations do. Bruce is quiet. Bruce, like you're you're a former uh, iPhone user. Uh, what do you think of the flat design with the icons? What, what, what do you think of the whole interface? Well, Duke, I'm glad you asked me that because my wife still has an iPhone 4. And when, when she updates, you know, she's going to find out there's an update available and she's going to follow the Yellow Brick Road. And then she's going to look at it like a calf staring at a new gate. And then she's going to call her husband for some IT family technical support. Now I'm going to have to dive back into that thing. You know, it's going to, you know, it's different. And there're going to be something. I mean, you know, for the for the uh, for the high-tech, you know, geeky user, you know, they'll 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 push right into the new features. But there's going to be a lot of people like my wife, it's going to kind of freak them out and they're going to have to kind of learn. It's that different in some ways. I mean, icons are different, menus different, swiping a little bit different, stuff like that. Nice advances, uh sure, but it's going to be different. So, uh, I'm going to have to provide some support for my wife. And 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 here again, I mean, yeah, I'm an Android fanboy, and I and I'm not trying to be ugly, but like the control center, I mean, that was Android. But but I will tell you one thing, that I saw, that I was really envious of. Did you see that new gallery and how the yes. iPhone was going to arrange all of that, and depending mm -hmm. on how many photos that get smaller, and you can touch them to enlarge the the little icon, the photo icons. Let me tell you something, man. Android needs something like that. Agree. If, I I'll, agree. They'll probably copy from that too. Yeah. Well, the one, I mean, overall, I think um, two points that I have about the uh, iOS 7. Uh, the first is, yes, it's very easy for us Android guys to say, oh my gosh, Apple copied Android, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, I mean, could they really make things different, like the control center, having toggles on a, uh, on a notification tray? Can you really make that different? Um, the bottom line is, yeah, they needed to do something with iOS, and despite the fact we may joke about it, I think they did a good job with that. Um, the one concern I have with iOS 7, though, is they seem to be focusing a lot on transparency, and... I really hope that uh, certain people that people can disable that if they want. As an example, um, my brother's wife saw the screenshots of iOS 7, and she has uh, prisms in her eyeglasses, basically j just to uh, correct some eye issues. And she said that that effect on like the control center and that would probably make the device unusable for her. Because mm -hmm. it, it could mess up just the way, like, the rainbow colors of it. Um, so I'm really hoping from an accessibility standpoint that they do offer some customization in that. And uh, But otherwise, it, it's different. But I think people are going to get used to it. Um, we're always adverse to change. It's It's a common thing. But overall, I think Apple did do a good job. They did a good job. I, and, and I can't argue that. Okay, well, Dennis, you touched on it. I'm going to throw this to the panel. Uh, has uh, Apple done enough to uh, not really turn the tide, but, uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about the interface. It really hadn't changed since 2007. Ha is this enough upgrade to make people... Goo goo for iPhone Gaga again? No, no. I think people are, are the people who are goo goo for iPhone are the people who are diehards and, and or um, a lot of people just get an iPhone as a status thing. It's like buying a Mercedes or something. They just buy it headphones. Yeah. yeah, and 
you know, uh, I'm just saying it's um, people who are app fanboys aren't going to jump ship. Um, wow. But I think they've had enough people that may have converted that maybe they're they're switching over. I mean, I don't know why they're doing a full interface rearrange. Maybe they felt it's time. Uh, maybe they have lost some people. Um, who knows? I'll tell you right now, um, and I'm not going to lie when I say this. If 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 iOS goes to a sandbox type environment like Android has, I'll be the first one to, to uh, jump ship from from Android. Chris, I believe you just told a lie. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure, man. I think you like all the free apps in Android. <laughs> That's true. Uh, that, that is true, and I like the additional apps. Oh, oh. yeah. I th I think I did lie. I take that back. But what about think... uh, what about the radio feature? Is uh compared to play? What What do you think? It's just garbage. on on the presentation. You know, I did not catch that, so I I, I have no comment on it. Well, you know, I mean, I'm thinking, goodness gracious, with uh, with all the record companies they got signed, uh, they've already got that catalog there, you know, and it looks like they've got them all on board. So uh, I think it's going to be successful. With all iPhone users that are out there now, it will be subscription-based, but I, I think it's probably a winner for them. I really do. I think so, too. Yep. All right, man. Any other comments? I'm going to say this one last time. They did a good job. I'm going to say this one last time. It's <laughs> iOS 6 with a, a uh, uh, icon pack. Well, no, there's there's a lot more to it. I mean, it, it's you see the icons. That's the first thing you're going to notice. But exactly. they did add a fair bit. Yeah, they changed the calendar iOS. around. They changed the how notifications well, they, around. They, they, changed, they, got, they did tagging for for all you know. Uh, there, there, you they still can't tabbing, share. Yeah, you, they did a lot of shit. You still can't so. share on a wide scale. You open up an Android something, you know, if you pull up a picture and you say share it, you can share it with about. I'm serious. 50 or 60 items, okay? You know, the, the, whatever apps you got on your phone. With iOS, it's Twitter, Facebook, or mail. You know, it's that's still the same way. That's the, They haven't opened up any kind of sharing. So, yeah, man, there, there's a lot. There's, there's still a bunch that, that I, I'm disappointed in, to be honest with you. Yeah. I do have to say the one thing that uh, kind of went under the radar for some people is uh, the fact that you are now going to be able to use other keyboards. Uh, it. You're not going to be limited to the iOS one. It well, like. and, and we hadn't touched on it yet. I thought maybe one of y'all might bring it up, but what about the multitasking? It looks like that iOS finally has true multitasking abilities. Okay? I'll tell you what. It uh, looks like WebOS. <laughs> no, it, it looks like the HTC One. It, it's it, they, the HTC One. It is the exact same setup, the well, exact same setup. Most most of the developers are comparing it to the original Web OS and how the Web OS function as far as how how it handles multitasking. The cards and everything. Yeah, I compare it directly to uh, HTC One because literally I saw the screenshot of it and I was like, yo, this is the HTC One. All right. Well, it sounds like that uh, Apple's done such a good job that at least Jeff Zeiss is going to be uh, hosting his own show called yeah. uh, uh, Apple Journal. Take a, take a <laughs> bite of Apple. <laughs> you know, and it's just funny. I don't own an Apple product, so um, <laughs> you know. But I, you know, just on you know, I watched the, the presentation. I they did a, a very slick job. That Craig Federici did a great job. He's in, definitely a a rising star in Apple, and I think they they tried to stem the tide. And I, you know, if I had the bucks, I don't know what that MacBook Pro is going to be, you know, um, priced at. But that thing looks like a beast, and it looks like uh, you know, like you said, cannon fodder. But you know, it looks like a you, know, you stuck that thing down a cannon, it would, it's going to shoot right out, you know. So. And I actually think overall, to go on your point there, Jeff, um, I really think this was one of Apple's best presentations since Steve Jobs. Yeah. 
So again, we, we can joke all we like, but when you take the facts of how the presentation was, how they portrayed all the information, as you said, they did do a good job. They did. I think, I, I think all jokes aside, I, I think we all agree that it was a very well put together presentation. And, uh, you know, just comparing it to uh, Samsung's presentation of the Samsung Galaxy S4, <laughs> uh, uh, I think we've really put it in perspective now, haven't we? Yep, yep. we have. Okay. Let's go hey, on guys. Broadway. Let's talk about apps. Who's got an app they want to share with us? I Bruce, can go what about first. you? Yeah, I can share an app. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to share an app and tell you a little story behind it. This is called Dice 3D. And you guys that are in the Hangout, you know that every Friday I pick up my granddaughter. She's 12, and we have what we call a poppy date, and we hang out. So we went to the Muse Coffee Company, one of my favorite places, and she got a chai latte, and I got a house uh, blend, uh, you know, and we're sitting down there on this really nice leather couch, and there's a coffee table in front. And like a lot of coffee houses, they've got some board games, table games that you can play, checkers, chess, whatever. And one of the games uh, underneath the coffee table was Clue. And, of course, I don't have a clue about Clue, but my granddaughter says, Poppy, you want to play Clue? And so I said, sure, why not? You know, so we're having a good time. So she sets up the board for Clue on the coffee table, gets out all the little cards. You know, it's all about who, it's a whodunit game, you know, who killed who, what weapon they use, and what room do they use. And then she's looking around, and lo and behold, there's no dice in the clue box. So I get an idea. So I go to the Google Play Store. Sure enough, man, you wouldn't believe all the dice apps there are. So, yeah. so this one is called Dice 3D, and it's really cool. I'll, I'll pick it up and show you. But you can, you, can, you, can, you can shake the dice, you know, like this. You know, come on, snake eyes, lucky seven, you know. Or, or you can you can press and hold, and the dice will just kind of bounce around on the screen. And I don't have my sound turned on right now, but I can feel it vibrate. And then when you let go, you know, it'll, it'll stop. So we were able to play the game Clue. Thank you, Android. Thank you, Google Play Store, for Dice 3D. That's my <laughs> app of the week. And now uh, Jeff's man. laughing because he, he shoots crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm going, this is Liar's Dice. You know, maybe it's, you know. Very good. I, I, awesome, I, Bruce. I do have a question there, Bruce. Sure. Um, can you customize that so it's not just six sided dice, like say a D20 or something like that? I, th I think there are a lot of different uh, dice apps. Um, I know there's far... a lot of apps you can do it. I was just curious. Yeah. On this I, you know, when I tap on the menu button, I don't see any. Well, there is a preference thing, and uh, you're looking at the preference. So I got the number of dice. So, wow, we can have. Uh, Sound volume. Uh, let, let's let, let's see. Let's see what happens when you uh, when you do this. I don't know. So uh, now, what what kind of game would take this many dice? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, Yahtzee takes five. Yahtzee takes five. Yeah. Okay. That's six dice. So. Yeah. So anyway, that's my app. <laughs> okay. Like Very it. good, Bruce. Thank Very you. Good. Yeah. Here only on Android Journal. We play craps. <laughs> yeah, come on, baby needs new shoes. <laughs> okay, Chris, what you got for us, big dog? Tell you what, uh, give me just a couple more minutes. I have to sign in to uh, AirDroid. All right, Dennis. Dennis, you don't have an app, do you? I don't have an app ready this week. I've been uh, flashing my phone with different ROMs again, and um, I'm kind of at a point where I've got where I haven't really put all my uh, optional applications on just yet. You don't have your apps in one basket, do you? Pretty much, yeah. That's exactly I have what I did. Actually, in one basket. You're right. I actually have to reset my device, so I have to re-download everything. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, George, you got an app, brother? I um, I've had I haven't even had time to think about work or play. So I don't have an app. I'm sorry. That's cool. So, Jeff, what do you got, big dog? Uh, I do have an app for for once in my life. Um, this app is called. Um, Magisto, I guess. Yes. Yes, it is. And it is basically, I'm going to click on it. Hopefully this will work. Let's see. Oops, we don't want that. We want to go back. It's, um, it's an app for, uh, you take clips on your, cli uh, and it automatically uh, put it together and format it 
differently. So maybe I can get this to, I can't seem to get it to go to the menu on it though. Let's see, hold on. Now, so I have like four clips on the, um, yep, yeah, all right, well, let's get the answer machine in the background. Um, uh, you, yeah, you can, you it can sounds create, like a bill collector to me, I don't know, but go I ahead. I hope so. You can shoot a video or you can use a gallery of videos and they can be from your um, Google Drive or locally on your phone. You select which ones you want. You put them together. You know, I have like uh, on this one I had all these clips of my dogs here. So and I just added them together. All right. And I'm going to go back. Go back to choose videos. And go back to Right. Now, and now, then, Jeff, it, it looks like that, you know, like it'll stitch them together with a theme. Yes, it will. Can, and can, can you add like a title or credits to that? Yes, you can. Here's, here's one I did with my dog. It'll, it'll come up. It has sound to it, but I don't have it. I was able to put this SA Films on it, and this is Sammy. And this is about four little clips of different uh, of my two dogs playing in the yard. And it will put it together in this theme. I picked this theme. And it does some neat things where it will do the slow motion of the dogs because I didn't do that in the video. It does that quick reset of the dogs. And um, it does all these neat little features. And that's with each little theme you pick. And then it uh, basically it, it's a link that um, kind of like Animoto where once it's done, it will send you a link and then you, you, you can play it play the video or download it for 99 cents but all the transitions all this stuff that it's doing was all from the software program putting it together for you now you can do it with with audio and this is to a soundtrack with the um, you know like I think it's something called the Ritz so we'll do it to the length of the of the music that you pick but uh, if, if you had you can you, you can pick it without that so you can basically have it um, just regular uh, clips of yourself talking and overlapping and things like this. It, it, it's pretty uh, slick. For, you know, this this is the honest truth. Uh, just right when you said the name earlier, uh, I actually uh, did a search, a Google search for the best Android video editors. That one came up first. Yeah, it's it was pretty slick. I, and I'm gonna see if I can show you if I can use the gallery. Well, maybe a, a better idea would be show. Uh, I'll just pick one. I'm going to go back again and just show what the demo ones because that's probably already together. So here's, I'll just pick this one. And this is one of the demo ones that they have on the site. And you can put the titles in there. And, it, you know, basically it, it, it puts it all together for you. And it makes it look like a nice little movie with these transitions and things like that. And it's and it's free. Hmm. It reminds me a lot of the uh, Black of the uh, BlackBerry 10 feature, the uh, story uh, mode. Yeah, but this, on the other hand, you know, it's, it's doing, I, there's another software program called Animoto that you can use to do this, some of this stuff, but this is a, a very slick way of doing it, um, you know, and it's, if, you, if you want to have it create the video and then actually download the MP4, it's 99 cents per download, and you have a nice little movie put together. It is neat, that's for sure. I, you guys could do it at your Charlotte uh, showing using your phone. I can't wait to use that and, and get some video of George and Bruce playing skee ball, man, at Dave and Buster's. I just can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Just You're going to see some that. Hurl Vines. Hurl Vines. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was yeah, the name of that? I did find an app for. Uh, for George, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's too late. But George, you probably should have got this app. It's called Moving Planner, <laughs> and uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it's got all kind of stuff here: tax preparer, babysitter, childcare broker, uh, it's seven to eight weeks before packing materials, moving organizer. So uh, I know it's kind of too late, but yeah. George, you needed this. I, I, I move. I move the way I've always moved the last three times. I, I, I get a marble notebook, I put a checklist in it, and as I do things, I just basically take them off and I basically write names uh, of people I talk to or, you know, everything. So if I lose that notebook, I'm pretty much screwed. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, man, if you, if you were a real geek, you would have used Google Keep. I'm just telling you right now, I'm really disappointed <laughs> to hear that you're using Google Paper. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, just kidding there. All right, Chris, what you got, big dog? I have a launcher. Yes, another launcher. Oh, boy. Yeah, here we go. This, there was this an looks, update to Nova Launcher today. You know. There was an update. I, I enjoy it. Um, first of all, I have a question, guys. Whoever answers first, I'm going to put it in on my phone, okay? Who is your favorite music group? Led Zeppelin. Pink Floyd. Led Zeppelin. Cheap Trick. And as you can tell here... Captain and Tennille. Oh, jeez. Yes, so, Muskrat Love. <laughs> As Abba, you can tell here on Abba. my screen, this Justin Abba. guy. Oh wait, um, who's that? Mm -hmm. No, it's right there. I see Led Zeppelin right yep, there. Yep. So you can type in strings, and it'll uh, auto-populate as you go along. So let's go ahead and type in Led Zeppelin, and look, it uh, changed my f entire phone to Led Zeppelin. Cool, oh, man. Yeah. Um, it also gives you some uh, recommended things to do uh, on the internet. So you can press Spotify. And if you have Spotify on your phone, which I don't, uh, it'll take you right to, to Led Zeppelin. Um, it's also uh, it'll also take you to some free wallpapers that are Led Zeppelin based. Um, every search is different, so it's it's kind of cool to to kind of explore and, and see what's going on. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean this is this is basically anything that you can think of, um, you can put in here. So let's let's say for example. Uh, uh, Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd. We were watching that <laughs> earlier on the Hangouts. <laughs> I'm interested so. to know, after the Pink Floyd, I'm interested to know if they have a Warren Zevon theme. How do I spell I that? I want to know what it would be. Oh, it's don't in the side chat. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Warren who? Zevon. Warren Zevon. Z-E-V-O-N. Have you never heard of the man? Werewolves of London. <laughs> there he is. Oh, Warren Buffett. Wow. Wow, I may need to get that just because it's got a war in Diva. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, let me try to put in a, a movie so that we, I can show you guys like the uh, different types of things that you can see here. So, uh, Fast Matrix. Okay, Matrix. That's good too. Or Fast and the Furious. That's even better, almost. The Matrix. Of course, the zombie, first one was the zombie only good one, but not there. Zombie strippers. As you can tell here. Um, it even searches the Play Store for stuff. So see here, you got the the Matrix Live wallpaper you can download from the Play Store. That's pretty cool, right? Um, let's see. Why did it disappear? Oh, here we go. Um, but yeah, it it basically tailors what you want to search for and and gives you the best recommended results. So okay, as you can tell here, it's, it's it's called Everything Dot Me. And, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. How many launchers do you have on your phone? <laughs> um, I have currently five. <laughs> wow. But, <laughs> one, one launcher launches the other. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when you open something, you probably get this annoying thing, like, what do you wish to open it with? <laughs> Chris is a launcher lecher. That's what he is. Oh, exactly. a launcher lecher, yeah. <laughs> for, for any Android developers out there, you might want to consider, you know, developing an app for people like Chris, you know, <laughs> like that. The launcher keeper. To where you know it's one one folder where you can launch all your launchers from one spot. I don't know. You just need to do join Tyra, launchers launch anonymous. Yeah, exactly. Launcher Hello. randomizer. <laughs> so uh, I typed in a, another little cute little uh, search string here. Halo. Everybody knows who, who what Halo is. It's a video game. I think we said hello to one another at the beginning of the show. Hello, Go ahead. hello, <laughs> Robert Altman. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as you can tell here, you know, it gives you direct links to GameStop, games, game, yeah, sorry, GameSpot, and wow, that's confusing, GameSpot and GameStop, sorry. Um, it, it also gives you a direct link to your official website for Halo, but uh, mm. it, it's a great novelty app to have. Um, obviously, if, if you do these types of things a lot, it'll be great to have, but... I don't really do this too much, so this would be up to the user whether you want to install this or not. I think it's a, it's a novelty app, but to somebody else, it may be awesome. Wait a minute. You have a Best Buy icon on your desktop. Oh, yeah, that's that's. Remove cool. that. Yeah, Best Try. Get that out of here. No, you can buy Halo there. That's true. Yeah, that's what that is. It's not his... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, you, you can scroll over and clear the history. By default, this is what it looks like. Not bad. Could be worse. Uh, 
it gives you all your basic apps that you need. You got your social stuff here. You got what was that one? I didn't see this before. Oh, cool! It gives you uh, stuff that you can also download from the Play Store. Very nice. There's Buzz Launcher that you uh, demoed a while back. Oh yeah. <laughs> So it says, what's on your mind? So if you typed in Georgia, would it start playing that song or what? Did, what <laughs> I just spell, I spell Georgia for some reason. Yeah. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. You Spotify, right? There you go. <laughs> ah, there it is. Georgia Lottery. Yeah, man. Yep. So, yeah. What about wait, that? wait, wait, wait. How could you type in Georgia and get Urban Dictionary? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> I don't think you want to click that, Bruce. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But, uh, but yeah, um, for me, this is a novelty uh, application. Um, however, some people may love this. You know, it's something that you, 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 may, you may like, you know. But uh, oh, look, give it a try. See what happens. Wait, show us all your launchers there. Go back to that screen, man. You... Uh, I'm sorry, I have four, my bad. Oh, sorry. Apex, Nova, Everything Home. Yep. Trebuchet, okay. Yep. Trebuchet, I think, came with his ROM. CM10. Um, yep. All right, man. Very good, good Bruce. All right, gang. I got Camera Zoom FX. Ah, yes. Mm. Uh, this is a, a very popular. It's been, uh, this one is a paid app. It's been uh, installed almost 50,000 times. If you'll notice, it's got four and a half stars. So it's been a very popular camera app for uh, Android. And uh, real quick here, I don't know how this is going to work. Let me give this a try. I didn't get all of this set up in time. Uh, let me scoot this back just a little bit. This is a uh, this is camera zoom FX. Just real quick, I've got the camera up. You can switch the camera if you want to do front facing, but it's got a little thing for settings here. It'll tell you what your camera is. Uh, uh, I've got an eight megapixel. I've got uh, it set to manual prefocus. You can go in and do the settings. You can actually uh, uh, activate the camera to take a picture with your voice. It's got a burst mode. You can pick collage. You can do a time lapse. But it's got a lot of effects. Just like your Instagrams or your other camera effects. And you can pick which one of these you want to use. It will kind of put that effect within it. Once you find the one that you like. And here again, I haven't taken the picture yet. And you can like do a frame, uh, a composite. There's, there's just, like I say, I, I, and I, I featured this on our Android Week uh, last night, and I told Bruce then, uh, Bruce made the comment, he really didn't like uh, the, uh, the app uh, Snapseed because uh, it was just you had too many options. And if he didn't like Snapseed, he would hate this one because, believe me, there's all kinds of options like I say, you've got textures. You can just, you can go on and on and on on doing stuff with this app. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a camera zoom FX. It's a very popular app and very cool as far as I'm concerned. Little uh, photo editing, photo filtering app. You can, like I say, you can crop, and uh, yes, uh, of course, you've always got the reset for when you take it too far. Is Dang, that's the, all I've got. What about you guys? I got a question for you. Is this the one that if it takes it takes three photos, like at different exposures, and blends them together into one? Uh, this- yes, you can set it up. Uh, going back to the beginning, you can set up for a collage, and you can do that, absolutely. Yeah, I've actually used uh, earlier versions of it, and it looks like they've really improved the interface of it. So, Yeah, it's, it's a pretty yeah. decent app. I mean, I've used it probably probably for about eight months now. It's a nice app. Um, unfortunately, it seems like I always, when I hit the camera, I always seem to write for the Android one. So only when I'm looking to do something special or effecty is usually when I hit the, that, that app. So. Yeah, very, very, uh, very slick little app. And that's all I've got, gang. What about you guys? You got anything else? 
I'm all good. Any, good any closing thoughts on uh, the Google Waze purchase or uh, iOS 7 announcement yesterday? <laughs> I'm anxious to see what uh, what way uh, Google goes with uh, Waze whenever they do come out with uh, the whole Waze thing. I'm wa I want to see Google buy Foursquare. Ooh, me too. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the Olympics site so I can study hurling. So I can be ready for this weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey guys, Tech and Coffee is a community on G Plus. Uh, we get together. This is where we all met, uh, and we we uh, we love talking tech. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Tech and Coffee One. You can follow us on Facebook at Tech and Coffee One. Uh, search us on G Plus. Look for that Tech and Coffee logo. And uh, questions, comments, snide remarks, send them AJ at techandcoffee.info. Hey, gang, hope you guys have a terrific week. And uh, I'm going to meet at least two people on this panel Friday, and I'm looking very forward to it. Peace out, everyone.